Hey guys, this is Two with Ronin Tactics. Today, let's talk about the difference between the Shooto Belt, the Tassler's Belt, and the Sanji Belt. The difference between the Shooto Belt from the Tassler's Belt and the Sanji Belt is the Alpine Belt Buckle, the Cobra Belt Buckle itself. This Cobra Belt Buckle does not have a D-ring attached to the Shooto Belt itself. What we found was a lot of law enforcement and civilians they do not need the D-ring attachments, therefore their option is more of a Shudo style belt. The Shudo belt is made with the same rugged material that you find on the Task Force belt and the Sanji belt. It comes with an inner two inch inner belt. And it comes with a outer load bearing belt. The inner belt the two inch inner belt comes with a loop Velcro all on the outside. It also comes with hook on the inside to allow you to easily adjust. This belt is very simplistic and is also very comfortable when lined into a combat pants. The two inch inner belt fits very comfortably on a combat style pants, but will not work for standard uh, blue jeans or standard Savan type of pants that you find on the market. So in order for you to have an inner belt that works with a commercial type of pants, we also sell a one and a half inch inner belt. We call that the Rue belt. The Rue inner belt is a minimalistic belt that allows piles attachments to be ran on the inside. This pile on the inside will work with a lot of the magazine holders that you find that collapses like the elastic ones. This work great to allow you extra magazine clips while working low vis operations. While working low vis operations, you also we also carry foreign like handcuff keys uh, overseas. If we were uh, to get taken on that initial take, we have um, handcuff keys that we we put in here to allow us to still escape. You could put razor blades in here, you could put handcuff keys in here, whatever you need to do your urban evasion. The outer load bearing belt is lined with hook Velcro all through the dimensions on the inside. It's sewed on at certain points, bar tacked and double stitched to secure and allows that load bearing strength that you need in a combat zone when you're weighing this belt down with a lot of gear, a lot of equipment. This belt will never fail on you. We have operational data from special operations units and law enforcement and agencies for the last four years utilizing these belts globally around the world. This belt has never failed on any one of our customers and it is very effective on the battlefield. The low bearing belt has piles on the outside of the system. This uh, piles allows molly attachments to be weaved in between these pile systems. There's an adjustment uh, area to the Shooto belt that allows a four inch adjustment. Please go off the size as you see in the website uh, for the proper adjustment size. There's a retainer uh, that retains all of the extra slack. This uh, pile system goes as far as we can to still allow that four inch adjustment. The Shooto belt comes with the new Alpine Cobra belt buckle that's really reinforced. As you can see how bulky this belt is. It will give you 5,000 pounds of low bearing strength on just this belt buckle itself. You disattach the belt buckle by applying equal pressure on both sides, releasing the belt buckle. If you do not have equal pressure on both sides, the belt buckle will still be bind and hold in place. This belt was thought out. We reinforced the belt by bar tacking, double stitching, and applying the, the necessary stiffeners on this gun belt to make it very efficient in some of the most hostile environments in the world. This belt is extremely rigid. It's one of the more rigid belts that you see on the market today. Here 
we work with different companies to provide our customers with the best material possible for maximum performance for the shooter. As you can see, this belt is weaved and it provides a very, very stiff platform for all of our shooters. We have a lot of adjustment space for the shooter itself. The reasoning behind this is because during my operational years, we had to be able to run our gun belts on outside of our cold weather gear. While conducting cold weather operations, while conducting free fall type of operations, you have a lot of gear, a lot of layers of clothing on you, and this adjustment will allow that adjustment space you need to layer the belt on the outside of all your cold weather gear. So when sizing up the belt, once you size up the belt, you make the proper adjustments. So let's sit here. As you can see how stiff this, this is to work. I have been running my gun belt for five years now and it still has the same stiffness as I did the first day I had it. Once you lock this thing in place, you can take out the extra slack by S rolling it back into itself, still keeping it in that smooth platform so nothing will get caught up on your equipment. If you're rolling it outside here, this thing could get bind and stuck on. So you always want to S row it to the inside of your belt. The male side of the system allows you to pull the male side of the belt buckle off so it allows you to weave any type of holsters as in a safari land, a blade tech type of holster that requires you to loop it through your belt system itself. So once it loops in, then it, it binds with the outer belt. This belt dimensions also has the ability to attach blade tech type of magazine uh, holsters, AR clips, any type of uh, G code type of magazine holders can interweave into the pile system. The pile system, as you can see, is very tight. This is a very rigid belt. We utilize uh, a special weave material and certain stiffeners in certain places to make this belt extremely rigid. What I found during my operational years is that you want the belt to become rigid, very much like the competition shooters. So the belt being as rigid as it is, it's very hard to weave the, the molly system onto the pile system, low bearing belt. So what I like to do is I like to reverse the system and, and bend it the opposite direction, opening up the pile system for you to easily weave things in. Once you weave it through, and basically you bend it back, it's gonna further bind the magazine holsters, the molly, uh, type of attachments that you, you attach onto the low bearing belt. So once you route this thing in, because of the rigidness of this material, it's gonna be hard to snap this thing out of place. It firmly sits in place and it will never move or shift on the shooter itself. The shooter belt was greatly thought out during its construction and in manufacturing. We did not take any shortcuts while developing belt because we realized that this is a lifeline. This is a life supporting piece of equipment. So everything was reinforced, double stitched, bar tacked. We thought about every single dimension of this belt while developing this belt. This belt is a more affordable option than the Task Force and Senji belt. It does not come with a D-ring, but it has all the other features that you normally find on the higher end Ronin belts.